Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from Samuel McGreal, and if I'm not mistaken, I think this is his second loadout that's been chosen so far. He says, some sort of space marine themed loadout. Primary is the m 21, hollow sight, green laser sight, PBS4 suppressor with flat white paint. For the secondary, we'll be using the Unica 6 gross with a mini red dot sight and flat urban paint. Gadget 1 is going to be the radio beacon for the recon class. Gadget 2 will be a claymore. Knife will be the Tonto. I believe I picked the Tonto over the Weaver. And the grenade will be the incendiary. He says, hey level cap, I was thinking of all the space movies and games going around and couldn't put a finger on a loadout used in any particular one. I decided to make a random space themed loadout and it would probably match some movie or game somewhere. It turned out to be CQB oriented with the Radio Beacon 5000 allowing you to spawn in close to the action. Use the Incendiary X 12 v 7 to block the doorways and use chaos to your advantage. You can even shout out something from Star Trek if you want. Um, let's see. Scotty, beam me up a mediocre loadout that looks like a giant robot dildo, I guess. Uh, is, is that Star trek -y enough for you? And what is the deal with the PBS suppressor? It looks totally nuts. I had to look it up online actually to find out if it was a real suppressor, and sure enough it is. It looks like it was designed specifically for the AK platform though, where it looks a little bit less ridiculous. When you slap the thing on an MTAR-21 and paint it white with the gun body, it looks like something out of a James Bond film or even worse. Cosmetics aside, if this gun was shooting something like blue laser beams, it would almost certainly be something out of a sci-fi film. And I think that's just a growing trend with modern weapon design is it's starting to look pretty crazy looking. I remember watching the remake of Total Recall and all the bad guys in that were using the Chris Vector, which is a very futuristic looking weapon but it's still a real gun made by a real company and it functions totally fine and has a very specific purpose to it but it still looks like it's from the future which is kind of cool I guess I mean I don't know how much extra functionality has been built into modern weapon design as opposed to old-school weapon design but it's still kind of cool that they're always trying to think in new ways to make guns and as far as the performance of the gun goes it is without question relegated to CQB combat at range it can be uh, very difficult if not almost impossible to get a kill with it which is hard because so many maps require long-range engagements you can't just hang out in cqb combat all day sometimes in team deathmatch but even there you're going to need to long range some people in which case it's probably going to use most of your magazine to drop somebody now here's the deal with the mtar it's got a high rate of fire so you can deal a massive amount of damage in a very short period of time and to balance it out we've had to give it very shitty aiming down sight accuracy low muzzle velocity and a kind of long reload the reload's actually not too bad on this carbine, even though it's a bullpup. Now when you put a suppressor on this gun, you take a weapon that's shooting at about 500 meters per second and drop it way down to the point where if somebody's just running across the screen in front of you, it's going to be hard to land those shots. I hate the feeling of suppressed weapons in Battlefield. The reason for this is that they're using subsonic ammo whenever you put a suppressor on the gun. They switch out your normal bullets for subsonic bullets and this means that your shots are going to be going 300 meters per second or slower and that just hurts to shoot with in any situation. So it, it just makes it very difficult to use your weapon and not as enjoyable for me. Even though it's a huge advantage in game modes like TDM staying off that minimap, it just makes guns not fun I guess in my opinion. I like weapons that connect when you shoot and having guns that connect like half a second after you shoot sometimes is just not a good feeling. Now it is true that suppressors are used in the military in many situations but oftentimes they're not actually used with subsonic ammo. I would say probably most of the time they're not used with subsonic ammo. There is subsonic ammo out there but a lot of it has trouble cycling normal weapons and you almost have to build custom made weapons to use subsonic ammo in fully automatic fire modes or even semi-automatic for that matter. It's not to say that a suppressor is not ineffective though, even without subsonic ammo 
it will greatly dampen the sound that the weapon makes and it can be very good for trying to keep people from pinpointing your position based on sound alone. Now obviously in Battlefield they use the subsonic ammo as a balancing factor. Obviously the suppressor is an amazing feature to have on a gun in a video game if it doesn't show you on the minimap when you fire. It allows you to move around stealthily which is probably one of the most useful tools you can have in certain game modes. How do you balance that out? Well you make the muzzle velocity incredibly slow which makes it really hard to hit your targets and unfortunately really unenjoyable to shoot the weapon. Maybe in upcoming Battlefield games they'll give you the option for multiple levels of suppression or maybe some guns will have the option to use suppressed ammo and others won't and if you put a suppressor on a weapon that doesn't have suppressed ammo it'll dampen your signature on the minimap rather than making you completely invisible. That would be a nice trade off in my opinion because there's a lot of guns that I would like to use with a suppressor without reduced muzzle velocity but I would totally be willing to take a dampened minimap signature over completely being invisible. Now as far as as this loadout goes it's workable you can do well with it if I wanted to actually improve it a bit though I would change up the gadgets claymore can be a little fun in TDM but ultimately I would love a tugs because that would really allow me to kind of camp a bit more and get people really close to me and then pop out and surprise them because at medium and longer ranges this gun just really sucked to use it was not enjoyable at all and perhaps some of that's due to netcode I can never really tell these days but let's watch this kill back here for a second and you can see see just how wonky Battlefield is sometimes and it's part of why I just get really aggravated playing this game because I feel like no matter what my skill level is sometimes your shots just fucking miss and there's nothing you can do about it. Also great running animation there totally easy to track a target when he's just sort of jittering all over the place giving you weird unpredictable motions. So I don't know what you guys are expecting when you play a shooter but this is what you can expect when you slap a suppressor on a gun in Battlefield. Anyway the loadout itself isn't off but I would only say use it on TDM, stay close quarters, and if possible use a tugs and you can be a camping little dirt bag but it'll work really well. That pretty much wraps it up for this episode of Loadout. Don't forget to leave your comments down below letting me know what you'd like me to run with for next week and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.